Hello and welcome to Ashford.com. You are watching an interesting video on simple fitness tests. In 5 minutes, you can get a pretty good idea of where you are and what you need to work on. In regards to fitness, most people are good about knowing where they want to be. In other words, they know their point B. I want to weigh 120. I want to have 10% body fat. I want to look good in a swimsuit. That's great, I love when my clients have a goal in mind. However, what most of them miss is their point A. Where are you starting? What do we have to work with? Well, if you have 5 minutes, you can get a pretty good idea of where you are and what you need to work on using these four simple fitness tests. This one is extremely simple but provides almost all the information you need to ascertain your fat loss goals. Measure your waist and measure your height. If your waist is more than half of your height, you need to focus on dropping some fat, simple enough. Using the waist to height ratio is much simpler than the BMI-MI scale and it's also a better indicator of high blood pressure, diabetes, heart attacks, and stroke 1. Keep your waist to half your height or below and you'll avoid obesity and all the negative conditions that are associated with Another simple test that requires no equipment, the sitting rising test measures flexibility, muscle strength, power to body ratio, and overall coordination. Simply lower yourself to a seated position on the floor using as little assistance as you can. Then, stand back up using as little assistance as assistance as you can. Points are docked for each body part used to assist the movement, with the exception of the feet of course. The maximum score possible for each movement, sitting and rising, is 5. For example, if Bill must use one hand to assist himself to the ground, he gets a score of 4. If to rise he needs a knee and a hand on the knee, thigh, he gets a score of 3. The composite score is the total of two scores, which for Bill is 7. Researchers found that a score of 7 or lower was associated with a 2-5 times higher risk of death when compared to those who score 8 or above 2. If you score poorly on this test, movement efficiency and overall muscular strength need to be addressed. Keep the score above 8 and you're doing great. If you can get it to 10, even better. Only 2 out of the 159 participants that died during the study follow-up had Planking can reveal a lot about someone, but I mainly use it for assessing core strength, which includes any weakness or compensation pattern involving the lower back. If you can hold a plank for 2 minutes, you pass. If you can't, that's the first thing to address. Second is where you feel it the most if you can't hold if you can't hold it for 2 minutes. In my experience, the reason most people can't hold a plank long enough is because they have too much weight around their waist. It's hard to hold up all that weight for 2 minutes. Our first assessment, the waist to height ratio, covers that part of it. If you're fairly thin and can't hold a plank for 2 minutes, chances are you don't have the necessary endurance in your abs and back to hold for that long. The best way to get up to 2 minutes? First, lose the stomach if it's there. Focus on good food choices first and foremost. Second, practice planking. That alone will help strengthen your core, and doing it with extra weight at the beginning will make it that much easier as you lose the weight. However, once you can plank on your elbows for 30 seconds, consider sliding out further to make it harder. Keep making it harder and harder as you progress but make sure to test the default version of the plank here and there to see if you're getting close to that too. The last assessment is just as simple as the others, stand on one leg. That's it. If you can do it for at least 10 seconds while staying fairly still, you pass. If not, chances are you need a little work on your hips, ankles, or knees. Strengthening the muscles of the hips and calves and calves will be very helpful here but just as important is to make sure they're not bound up into knotted up balls of muscle. In other words, they could be chronically tight, and that can have a big impact on your balance. The solution breaks down like this. Strengthen the muscles using exercises such as squats, deadlifts, and calf raises, and focus on using as much range of motion as possible. 
do mobility work for the hips, IT bands, outside of the upper leg, and calves using foam rollers, tennis balls, or the stick, see. Take 5 minutes to test yourself with these 4 assessments. After that, you'll know where you are, making it easier to get where you want. Good luck!